Today's Namaste Yoga continues our Benefits of Yoga series, and today's benefit is about discipline. Hello and welcome to episode 206 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you for joining us today. We're continuing our series of uh, talking about the benefits of yoga and today we're going to be talking about the benefit of discipline. So don't turn the video off because I promise it's going to be a really beautiful heart-centered class. We're going to be talking about the benefit of having the discipline of a daily practice today and I promise you it's going to be a class that you're going to enjoy doing. So I think when people think about discipline they want to just turn off and run away but there's a lot of benefits to discipline <laughs> and that's I mean obviously that's what we're talking about that's the title of the class but so we're going to explore that a bit today I want to start by thanking my awesome squeezed yoga clothing for my clothes thanking Donna I'm wearing some of the classic clothes today I'm wearing a long sleeve bamboo top this is probably one of my favorite uh, tops it's the um purple bamboo top with one of my favorite designs, the flying heart design. And it's going to go really well with our class today since it's going to be a really heart-centered class. And also thanks to Dusky Leaf for our props today. Um, I'm using the yoga mat and blocks and you're probably going to need blocks and a strap today. And also a blanket. If you have a Mexican blanket, that will be useful for our seated practices today. And, or you could use a chair for that as well. We're going to start with the testimonial from Joy from SpeakPipe. Hi, Melissa. My name is Joy, um, and I just did your um, yoga for relaxation and stress relief benefits series, intermediate level, on YouTube. And can I just say, well, I would like to say that it's truly amazing. I've had a very busy and stressful week. I've been trying to lose weight and I've been exercising and working out a lot. I've been eating very well and I've also been working very hard as a consultant. So ending my week with your workout yoga session was amazing. So I'd just like to say, say thank you so much for all your hard work. And I'm looking forward to doing more videos and attending more of your classes. Have an amazing, amazing week. Lots of love. Namaste. Joy. Thank you, Joy, for leaving your message. I'm so glad you're enjoying Namaste Yoga. And you too can leave a speak pipe message at melissawest.com. So we are already having a humdinger of a winter here. We're freezing. I don't know if you've seen any of my recent blog posts, but <laughs> we were outside filming for uh, in our beautiful winter wonderland already. We've got snow that's staying on the ground already, and I'm cold. <laughs> so we have uh, booked ourselves to go down to Florida to warm up a little bit at the beginning of January. So we will be there for a little bit at the beginning of January. And we would love to meet some of our Florida Namaste Yoga members and yogis. And so if you would like to meet us while we're down there, we, I was speaking with a Namaste Yogi on Facebook yesterday. And she's going to help us organize a meetup while we're there. So we're going to be in the Fort Myers area. And uh, if you'd like to meet up with us there, then send me an email at info at melissawest.com. And we'll start to gather your um, information and start to organize this meetup. So we would love to meet you. We'll do some yoga, we'll have some food, it'll be fun. We had a lot of fun at our meetup at the 200th episode. The people that came really enjoyed it and meeting each other. So I can't wait to meet all you Florida people in the Sunshine State. That's what the summer is 
It won't be minus 15 in Florida, Tim. <laughs> okay, so that's all for now. Let's get doing our yoga for today. So you can go ahead and rest back on the ground. And since you've got your blocks anyway, <coughs> and it's going to be heart center practice, if you wanted to, you could start your practice resting over the blocks in supported fish pose, Matsyasana. So like this, if you wanted to, you can decide to start like that. It's your choice. Or you can just lie on the ground on your back. So two options for you for starting. So take a deep breath in and let it fall out of your mouth. Through our yoga practice, we find the discipline to come to our yoga mats every day. Ganga White, author of Yoga Beyond Belief, says that many of his students complain to him that they don't have the discipline to come to practice yoga every day. And um, when I asked um, yoga teachers, too, what some of the challenges they face um, as they try to stay inspired the longer they teach this is one of the things that they face as teachers too um, maintaining a daily practice so it's not just uh, students it's teachers as well so um, Ganga White says he doesn't feel disciplined at all when it comes to his yoga practice so he goes on to explain that when we think of discipline we usually think about effort or things we should do or don't have the energy to do. When we really enjoy doing something, we don't need discipline at all. Ganga White explains that he has learned to enjoy his practice by keeping it fresh and interesting. So I would have to agree 100%. I have not been able to have a daily yoga practice for over a decade by doing the same thing every day. I have kept it fresh and interesting, much like these yoga classes here and on the membership site. I have not been able to produce a weekly yoga podcast for the past four years by producing the same classes each week. I've produced original content each and every week to the tune of over 200 classes, and the same goes for our membership site. It's interesting, and it takes very little discipline for me to work there because the content I'm creating is always brand new and engaging. So we ask our viewers what are their interests, and we produce classes to respond to those interests. We point out the benefits of the postures. We ask our students how they feel in their bodies so they can be in touch with the effects of yoga on their well-being each time they practice. So by practicing yoga regularly, you become hooked into the benefits of your experience because you feel so good and you want to keep the energy of this practice going. And I'm going to link to some classes in the show notes. So the benefit of energy is one of the benefits of yoga and that was in class 202. A regular practice will keep you feeling strong and flexible. And those were two other classes in our benefits of yoga series. We had a class on strength and we had a class on flexibility. And when you start to miss a few days in a row of your practice, you will start to feel the unwanted effects in your body, your mind, your emotions, your energy, your breath, and spirit. And this will give you the practice and motivation to get your practice going again. I remember when I first started practicing yoga, I used to 
be able to feel the effects of a day when I didn't practice yoga. By about 4.30, I would feel myself getting really impatient with Tim and Trinity. So you can feel the, the positive effects of your practice, but you can also feel the negative effects of the absence of your practice. So Ganga White suggests we make the shift from saying, I have to do my yoga, to I get to do my yoga. This is like a shift from the, an, an attitude of discipline to an attitude of gratitude, I think. I personally love the way that Sally Kemp Campton invites disciplinary practices like meditation or yoga to become an opportunity to let go of low-grade emotional pain in a devotional way. Our yoga practice then becomes an opportunity to, and this is her quote, cultivate loving attentiveness to ourselves and the world. The world around us, of which we are a part. So this kind of discipline, Sally Kempton explains, requires, quote, patience, commitment, deep tolerance, and is best undertaken with love. So come to your practice with a sense of ease, relaxation, and reverence. Today, we will honor our daily practice with reverence. Reflect back on what the discipline of our practice has been in the past. And maybe even set some intention for the discipline of our practice in the future. So go ahead and set your intention for your practice today. What is it that you're trying to cultivate in your life right now? And how could yoga best serve you in fulfilling that intention in your life? We're going to begin with a little centering here. You can stay resting over your blocks or lying on your back, and you're going to place your hands on your heart center. And take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth. And then return to breathing in and out through your nostrils. And begin to feel your breath collect underneath your hands, in and around your heart center. So this is a way to connect more deeply with this part of yourself. Sally Kempton advises that you honor your practice. Treat the time you have set aside for your yoga as sacred and enter into it with respect. Sally advises taking a moment at the beginning of your practice to ask your body, your mind, and heart for their permission to enter into practice. And so this was a practice that Sue Medeiros, one of our open-hearted graduates on our membership site, shared with us um, as part of her meditation for our recent uh, retreat that we did for mindful compassion in your relationships, and everybody loved it. So it, it reminded me of it, and it works really well for our class here today. So take a deep breath in, and let me let it fall out of your mouth. And repeat these phrases silently to yourself. Dear body, and these are Sally Campton's words. Dear body, please give me permission to practice quietly and turn my awareness inwards. Please help me go into my yoga practice. Take a deep breath in. And let it fall out of your mouth. 
Repeat these phrases silently to yourself. Dear mind, I ask you with love to support my yoga practice. Please reveal your stillness and depth to me. Take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And repeat these phrases silently to yourself. Dear inner heart, I honor you. Please open to the sweetness that is your real nature and allow my yoga practice to be filled with your grace. And then when you're ready, if you're on your yoga blocks in that supported fish pose, Matsyasana, you can bend your knees, roll to your right side, and lie down flat on your back. Okay, we're going to begin with the love vinyasa this morning, spelling love L-U-V. And this is just a nice little warm up for your arms and legs and to bring circulation into your body and your joints. And so we'll start this with knees to chest pose. So you can draw your knees into your chest. And it starts with the letter L. So you inhale, take your legs straight up and your arms overhead. And then you exhale, you bring your arms up to make a U. And then inhale, V. And then you spell it backwards. Exhale, U. Inhale, L. And then exhale, come back to that knees to chest pose, Apanasana. And so then we'll do that again. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale L, exhale knees to chest. Inhale, legs straight up, arms overhead. Exhale to the U. Inhale, V. Exhale, U. Inhale, L. And exhale, knees to chest. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, knees to chest, and we'll do this one more time, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, arms overhead, and exhale, knees to chest. And then place your feet flat on the floor. And cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Open your knee out to the side. Draw your left knee in towards your chest. Fully bend your left leg and just a little keyhole stretch here to get into your hips. A nice little hip opener to begin.
Then you can release the stem, uncross your leg, and switch sides. So you're gonna cross your left leg over your right leg, open your left leg out to the side, draw your right leg in, fully bending your right knee. So this is just such a great counter pose to life. Hips get so tight. And then release that down here. You can bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. Take one of your blocks here, place it between your knees, just for good alignment from your hips to your knees to your ankles. Place your hands on the ground and press into your feet until your pelvis lifts off the ground. And here, if it feels like your chest wants to open, you can interlace your fingers and tuck your shoulders underneath you here as well so that you come into a little back bend here also. Seithu Bhandasana. And then you can untuck your shoulders and slowly lower it down. Just put your block off to the side. And hug your knees into your chest. If you've got any knee issues, it's a good idea to hold on behind your knees. And then you can roll up through your spine, draw your navel back to your spine, tuck your chin in, and rock yourself up. And come on over for cat pose, Marjarasana. So you'll be coming onto all fours. And you're going to exhale, round up for, through your back. And inhale and arch through your back. And think about really moving from that heart-centered place so that it's your heart drawing up to the ceiling. And then your heart opening up to the ground. So that you're coming to the your practice from a devoted heart-centered place in a place of gratitude for being here rather than a place of obligation And then from here, we'll do thread the needles. So you'll inhale and open your right arm up to the side and exhale, lower your right shoulder to the ground and the right side of your head to the ground and rotate through your spine.
and inhale, untwist to your spine. We'll do the other side. So inhale, reach up. Exhale, bring your left shoulder to the ground, left side of your head to the ground, and rotate through your spine. And then inhale, untwist, and come to a comfortable seated position. So this could be in a chair if you'd like. And if you have a folded blanket that you want to sit on, you could do that as well. And if you'd like to get a little drink of water, you can do that as well. So we're going to do, this is a Tibetan yoga practice called the diamond in the rose. And you're going to sit in easy pose, cross-legged, and join your hands in the Anjali Mudra, with your hands at your heart, and your thumbs are going to press into your heart center. Your eyes are going to be closed, but they're going to focus up at your third eye. And you're going to picture a red rose at the center of your heart. And in the center of the uh, rose is a sparkling diamond. And then we're going to sing the mantra, Om Mani Pame Hung. Om Mani Pame Hung. And this is to loosen the inner channels of your heart. And singing is supposed to loosen the grips of our heart channel. Apparently it's hard to sing when you're grumpy, and it's true. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I sang when I was grumpy. Um, and the meaning of this mantra is, behold the jewel in the lotus. And it's also said that the entire teachings of the Buddha are in contained in this one mantra. So when I say it means behold the jewel in the lotus, that's like, <laughs> um, you know, there are scholars that would expound novels and novels and novels what uh, the meaning is of this mantra. Okay, so let's make space with breath and a sigh. Om Mani Padme Hung, 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 Om Mani Padme Hung. Om Mani Padme Hung, 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 Om Mani Padme Hung. Om Mani Padme Hung, 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 Om Mani Padme Hung. Om Mani Padme Hung, 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 Om Mani 
盼美恒，嗡嘛呢盼美恒，嗡嘛呢盼美恒，嗡嘛呢盼美恒，嗡嘛呢盼美恒，嗡嘛呢盼美恒，嗡嘛呢盼美恒，嗡嘛呢盼美恒。Om Mani Padme Hum. Om 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 Mani Padme. Feel the effects of this practice on your body, on the space around you, your energy, your heart. Picture that rose, the jewel in the rose. Okay, so I'd love to hear more about how that was for you in in the comments. So leave your comments. Um, about that at melissawest.com in the comments section. Okay, we're going to do some Ik Pada Rajkupatasana, some pigeon pose now. So you can come from seated over to all fours. And just release your hips a little bit more. So slide your right knee forward to your right wrist, reach your left leg back and long. And then fold forward over your right leg. And you could take this mantra with you into your practice and repeat it internally as you practice as a way to stay centered in your practice. And then come from pigeon on this side, and we'll do pigeon on the other side. I stepped into downward facing dog. Adho Mukhswanasan, sorry. You can step into downward facing dog. And bring your left knee forward to your left wrist. And reach your right leg back and down. And fold forward on the left side.
And then you can come back up and we will step into Atomukh Swanasan, downward facing dog. And we'll use this as a transition pose to make her way up to standing. So walk your feet into your hands. And then roll up to standing. Okay, from standing, you take your feet underneath your hip bones, lengthen long down through your legs and up through your spine. And we'll keep that connection with um, translating discipline to devotion and that attitude of I have to to I get to by staying connected to our heart center with a little another little heart vinyasa uh, by interlacing your fingers at your heart and thinking of this as a like that rose at your heart when you did the Om Mani Padme Hong. Um, so this will be like um, blooming that heart, that flower at your heart. So the way that it works is you inhale here, you exhale, you round through your back, you inhale back to your heart and exhale. Inhale, reach up overhead. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, center. Exhale, side bend to the other side. Inhale, center. Exhale to your heart. Inhale, open up through your chest. And then exhale back to your heart. So breathe in. Breathe out, round out through your back. Breathe in back to your heart. And breathe out. Breathe in, reach up. Breathe out, side bend. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, side bend. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, back to your heart. Breathe in, open up through your chest. And breathe out, back to your heart. Breathe in. Breathe out, round it through your back. Breathe in, back. Breathe out. Breathe in, reach up. Breathe out, side bend. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, side bend. Breathe out, center. Breathe out, back to your heart. Breathe in, open up through your chest. And breathe out, back to your heart. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in. Breathe out, round it through your back. Breathe in, back to your heart. Breathe out. Breathe in, reach up. Breathe out, side bend. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, side bend. Breathe in, center. Breathe out to your heart. Breathe in, open up through your chest. And breathe out to your heart. Great. So from here, you're probably going to need your strap. We're going to do Gomukh Hasana arms. So just place your strap over your one of your shoulders. And start with your left arm up your back. So you're going to internally rotate your left arm and bring it up your back because this one, so start with your non-dominant arm. If you're right-handed, start with your left arm up your back. If you're left-handed, start with your right arm up your back, your less strong arm. And then you're gonna bring your right arm up and over and bring your fingers together. And if they hook, great. 
If not, you can um, use your strap, hold on to your strap here. And lift your arms up, keep dropping your sit bones. So stay long through your spine. So we're doing the standing first because it's easier standing than when you sit. So we'll practice it standing first. And then you can, whew. Whew, it's been a while since we've done that, I think. <laughs> Release on this side and just feel the difference between your two shoulders. Can you see the difference between mine? It feels really big. And then we're going to do this on the other side. So you'll internally rotate your right shoulder and bring your right arm up your back. And then bring your left arm up and over and maybe hook your fingers. So it's going to be different on this side. And if you need your strap, you've got it there. You can hold on to the strap and start working your hands together on the strap. Wowee. That's what my shoulder is saying. And then, whew, let that go. And before we come down and practice this seated and some variations of cow's face pose seated, we'll do wide-legged standing forward fold. Okay, so you'll take your feet wide on the mat and then you're going to roll your leg bones over your pelvis, lift and spread your sit bones behind you. And we're gonna make this a hard opener too, so interlace your hands and reach your arms up. So prasarita padottanasana. Wide legged standing forward fold with a chest opener here. And then slowly lower down. And you're going to make your way down to seated. So for cow's face pose, gumhuk asana, you may need a block underneath your hips if your hips are tight. There they are. So we'll start with your left leg on top of your right leg. And then if you need to stick a, a block underneath your right buttocks, you can do that as well. So that works fine um, for tight hips. And then you can um, internally rotate your left arm and bring it up your back and bring your right arm up and over and maybe your fingertips meet and maybe not and if not you can use your strap and walk your hands down your strap.
then you can release your arms here and we'll just twist here as well so rotate to one side doesn't matter which because you'll do both sides stay long through your spine root down to your sit bone and focus on breathing out drawing your navel back towards your spine And then inhale back to the center. And exhale, rotate to the other side. Lengthen long up through your spine while rooting down through your sit bones. Focus on breathing out. And then come back to the center and you'll switch your legs. So you'll place your right leg on top. And then from here, you're going to internally rotate your right arm and bring it up your back and bring your left arm up and over. Maybe your fingertips meet, maybe not, doesn't matter. No right or wrong, no better best. You can always use your yoga strap. And breathe here, lift your breastbone to open your heart center, sink down through your sit bones, use a block underneath your right side of your tushy if you need it. And then you can release, inhale, exhale, rotate. Parivit Gomukhasan. And then twist to the other side. Inhale, center. Exhale. Use your exhalation to lead you into your twist. back center. From here we're going to do Ardha Gohomukhasan um, as a forward fold. So I'm going to take your legs straight out in front of you. And you may even want to sit on your blanket to lift your pelvis a little bit. Can you pass me my blanket, sweetie? Thank you. So this is great here to get a little elevation for your forward fold. It just helps you to roll your pelvis over your leg bones a bit. 
And then what you're going to do is cross your right leg over your left leg and internally rotate your right arm, bring it up your back, bring your left arm up and over. <laughs> Get your strap too. So what you're seeing is the more complex the pose gets. So now the a leg is out long and it's asymmetrical. The more challenging it gets for your spine and your pelvis. And so things are maybe not coming together like it was when it was standing, when the legs are bent. So you're going to probably need your <laughs> strap now. And you're going to inhale and exhale, hinge forward. And then inhale up. <laughs> and switch sides. So your left leg is going to cross over your right leg. And you're going to internally rotate your left arm up your back. Your right arm is going to come up and over. Maybe your fingertips meet. Stay long through your spine. Inhale. Exhale. Hinge forward through your pelvis. Hmm. Hinge back up. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> and release this. Whose idea was this anyway pose from your body? And you can make your way down to lying on your back for Shavasana. So make yourself comfortable and rest back. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you. And check and see how your low back is feeling. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth. And take a moment to allow yourself to integrate your practice now. We're going to finish our practice today with a poem by Donna Falds from her book, Limitless, called Yoga's, Yoga's Gift. Merge movement with unchanging stillness. Blend stretch with breath. And depth mind awareness. Bridging the inner and outer realms is yoga's gift, allowing layer after layer to peel away until the truth is indisputable and I am left suspended like a drop of dew, poised and lucid in the quiet. So gradually allow your breath to deepen. You can rest back for as long as you wish. When you're ready, you can wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees, roll to your right side and slowly make your way up to seated. 
Thank you for joining me for episode 206 of Namaste Yoga. Please leave your comments at melissawest.com in the comment section. And I'll see you on the membership site or next week for episode 207. Namaste.